Hello. Well, I'm down in the woods again. I spent a lovely night last night. It's quite cold. But uh, it is the, towards the end of October now, so the leaves are starting to come off the trees. It's a really nice time of year, actually. It's time I really enjoy spending down the woods. Everything starts to open up a little bit so you can see, see a lot more. Lots of leaves falling. Lots of activity with the nature that's in the woods. Plenty to see, plenty to hear. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice day. I'm going to just get the fire warmed up and get some breakfast on. I've already got my cup of tea. And then we'll have a little look at some spoon carving again. Breakfast's going down well. Let's get this finished off and uh, we'll get on with some carving. What I did want to show you was how I deal with smaller spoons, short spoons. Um, if I'm working on anything really small, what I tend to do is double up so I've got plenty of timber to hold on to while I'm working on it. So these are a pair that have been roughed out and they're my kind of pocket spoon design so this is the the template for the for the job but what I do is make a make a double template so this can be laid onto a longer billet to give you the shape that you're after and it just means that when you're doing the axe work and the knife work you've just got a little bit of extra material to hold on to so what I want to do is just kind of make some finishing cuts on these uh, and then we'll get straight into probably doing a little bit of decoration as well I think on the handle so let's make a start and uh, just put some finishing cuts on. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to use a, a straight knife just to clean up the overall shape 
And what I will do is kind of flip these around and work on both spoons at the same time. So all the time looking to see where timber wants to come off. And these were made from a, a tangential cliff. So I've worked in from the bark side of the log which is what's given us these concentric rings in the bowl from the growth rings in the tree. Got a little bit more work to do on this side actually so let's get this one caught up a little bit. Take a fair bit of material out just here. Make sure I get this transition nice and clean now. I'm just going to keep flipping it round and creeping up. Leave a few shavings on just to give me a guide where that starts to get tough and then come back at it from the other way. Just clean up some of these facets on the back of the handle. Time to make sure everything, everything is lining up properly. A bit high on this front edge of the bowl, so I'm just going to take that down. It's better. I'm just going to keep working away until I'm fairly happy with the overall shape and finish on both of these. I'm going to leave a little bit of extra meat where they join. You can see the handle's still a little bit wide, so I'll take a bit of material off here and here. Right, so I'm just going to mark these little horizontal lines in there. Just to give me an idea. Go. Let's see them both now. See, so I've got a little, little gap in between the two. I can now trim back to this line. more off the back of the handle. I'm just going to bring Start bringing those cuts in for the finial that way and this way because I'm not far off separating these now. So if I start to put a V in here and start to make the angle of the top of the finial. So starting to weaken the joint between the two. Is they're in a similar situation now in terms of the work that needs to be done, so there's not a lot to be done. While they're still while they're still joined, it's best to do any of the work that's going to be 
easier while there's that extra material to hold on to. Really nice pattern in the grain on these. Just basically going around and doing the same thing that I normally would, roughing them out, and just trimming back the whole perimeter to look nice and neat. I'm really aiming for now a really clean finish. That's what I want to achieve. Now the timber's that little bit drier, it will take an even smoother cut, an even smoother finish straight off the knife. Got to slow down a little bit and guide the guide the blade. Give you some nice clean cuts. This will be the finished surface of the spoon when it's done. I'm just going to start to bring these angles in on the top of the handle on this one. Just define those facets a little bit. I'm going to come down all the way from the top of the handle at a bit of an angle, and then when I get to this part here. I'm going to drop the handle of the knife and steepen that angle slightly so it bites down a little bit deeper at the side there just gives it a nice a nice look then I'm going to come in from the sides of the bowl and stop that cut there hopefully just knock off this bit of waste so we get a nice clean transition there it looks a bit slimmer than it really is just by taking these out just by knocking these angles back a little bit that's that side done just need to match this side up now One of the most difficult things about this little detail is making sure that the, um, the cuts from the shoulders of the bowl come in to the same point to stop. And I'm aiming to bring them in and make these three facets fairly equal in width at the point at which they converge. So I'm just come in there like this. There we go, that's got them lining up quite nicely. I'm not really gaining anything by them being in one piece now. So I could just take a saw out and saw them in half. I think what I'll do is I'm just going to make a series of little V-cuts with the knife. Just separate these. So I'm going to just nibble away, a bit like you would with an axe if you were felling a tree. A series of V's in to the point where these just come apart. Get to a point where there's just not enough grain to hold them together anymore. So I'll just break them apart now. So now we've got two spoons to work on and I can start tidying up the bit where they've just come away. And I can start to come in to make this finial. Across the grain first, just rock the knife in a little bit, and then come in at the diagonal angle and just try and separate that bit out. And then from this side, I can do the same thing coming in from there, and like this. Start to refine. That shape. I'm going to break these corners a little bit. I'm going to take the line all the way off. And 
go. Just clip that one. Just match those up and then come across the top. Flatten that end grain. There we go, just a bit more material to come off towards the end now, so I can use a chest lever cut. Just thin that out and then come back and re-establish that facet. Make sure we're happy with the shape of the bowl. Just smoothing out any any rough sections. Good. So we can see now, hopefully, we've still got three main facets here on the back of the bowl. And what I want to do now is from this point here, cut across the high point and just make those three facets into five. It's going to give us a nice finish on the back of the bowl. Just refine this out one a little bit. And ideally, we want to make nice and long, nice long, uninterrupted cuts if we can. Carving pretty much done, handles all finished off, reasonably flat on this top surface here. And I've got these facets established on the edge of the handle. Put the thing that was hanging around my neck is now on my leg. So I've got my bodger's bib here just to give me a little bit of a surface to work on and a little bit of protection just in case I slip with a knife. And what I'm going to aim to do is a basic technique. I'm going to look to put some chips in from the edge here. So I'm going to mark these up first with a pencil. And I'm going to call, I'll call these flat chips. Because we're working on the bevel, basically, We're not really going to be cutting a deep pyramid. What we're going to aim to do is push down with the knife from one angle. So I'm just going to take this little knife here, which is a sheep's foot blade, and press down so that I'm going quite deep in the thicker section of the timber and then just finishing flush with the edge on the outside from one direction then come back in the opposite direction and make sure I put the point of the blade in the same place 
and just follow those lines out and then I can come in from the edge here and just lift out these little chips one side with its flat chips established. Then we can try and do the same from the other direction. Just pushing the blade in. And then back from the edge, just to lift those chips out. Here's a thumb to anchor that cut a little bit. There's not a lot of force going into it though, so it shouldn't really be necessary. Just enough pressure to remove a very small amount of material, so it's quite easy to stop. There we go, so we've got a nice set of chips on both sides now. So that's what that kind of knife is useful for. The other thing we might want to do is add a border. So let's have a look at that. Let's draw a border on. And I'm just going to do that in this centre panel of the handle. And I found the best tool for this job wants to be slightly more pointy. And what I'm going to aim to do is just follow the line with the blade tip back at a bit of an angle and cut in probably about half a millimetre deep into the wood. And I'm going to go around the inside first, cutting on the inside of the pencil line. But what I'm aiming to do is kind of hit the centre of the wood, the centre of the pencil line, sorry, at about half a mil deep. And I'm looking slightly in front of where the knife is tracking. Because if I look just at the point of the blade, what's going to happen is it's kind of going to go where it wants to. So I'm looking just in front of where I'm making the cut. So now I've been all the way around the inside. So now I'm going to do exactly the same from the outside, from the outside of that pencil line. Push the tip of the blade in and follow the pencil line again, aiming for the centre at a half a mil deep. And hopefully we get this nice long chip lift out. It's always a cleaner finish if these come out without too much picking at them. You just want to don't try and be too aggressive and cut really deep. Just follow the line. Nice pointy knife. And there you go. That's what you're aiming for is this nice long thin chip. Finish it off across the bottom there. So there we go. Then there's one last type that we might want to do, which is this kind of pyramid chip. So I'm going to put one of those at the bottom here and I'm going to make it quite a big one. Let's go for quite a long one. In order to take this out in one go, 
I'm going to put a mark in the centre and draw a line out to each point on the triangle. And then we're going to go for a sheep's foot type blade again and I'm going to push in to the middle so that I'm cutting deep into the centre of the triangle but only just touching the edge on the outside. So hopefully you can see that I've just cut from the centre out towards the edge. Then what I'm going to do is push the knife in at the angle so it goes deep again towards the centre and lift out one little chip. Flip it round, push it in from the corner again and then we've loosened up the second little chip and then just coming in across the grain this time for the last one push down into that end grain and lift out that third chip. So effectively we've just made the job a little bit easier by breaking that bigger piece of material down into three separate sections and then we've got a nice deep pyramid chip. So there you go. That's how I add a little bit of decoration. I think the grain in this particular area should add a nice feature to that as well. So there we go. The only thing left to do now is just to clean up the inside of the bowl a little bit. So I'm going to use the bigger spoon scorp for that. And I'm going to hold the handle come in and try and take some really fine cuts. This is probably going to get in the way a little bit now. So let's just take that off. So I'm going to hold this in my hand. Just come in and refine the cuts that have already been made, looking to clean up Just turn it round. There we go. Now that's finished off the inside of the bowl quite nicely. The only thing I might just whip round and do as a last as a last process is just take off the sharp edges of the bowl just so they're nice and comfortable. I'm just looking to take a tiny amount of material off. about 45 degrees across that grain. Just a nice light little shaving just to break that edge a little bit. You can just clean up with this smaller blade in that little transition there. What 
I could just do, where there's still a little bit of a pencil mark on the top of this chip here, just come in, take a really light shaving off of the surface, just to get rid of that pencil mark. Just cleans that up a little bit. So there we go, one finished pocket eating spoon. Just needs a coat of oil now. A few little tips for you there. Hope you found it of some use. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next one.